everybody, this is Stephanie from the Regional Clubs team at the Yale Alumni Association. Looking like a beautiful weekend ahead, so we're really excited to kick this weekend off with a special guest today. And as the name suggests, we don't have a lot of current students on Yale Alumni Live, but today we do, and we're very excited to welcome Cleo Green, who you are going to hear about in just a few moments. I do believe many of you probably know him, so I'm not going to go into too much of an introduction, but here he is. Let's get him up and talking with Khalil just a second. Thank you all for tuning in. We've had a lot of excitement on Yale Alumni Live lately between Handsome Dan Zoom bombing us and now Khalil. Thank you so much for being here. Hey. Hi, how are you? How's it going, Khalil? I'm great. It's a Friday. Um, doesn't mean much for me because I'm currently not enrolled, but it's still a nice day. It's nice to see all my friends out and I'm definitely going to enjoy it the weekend. It is. It's funny. I was just thinking to myself, wow, Khalil's like really awesome for doing this with me on a Friday afternoon on a day like this, because if <laughs> I were in your shoes, I would be out having a quite a bit of fun. So thank you for taking the time. I'm excited to talk to you today. Of course. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> So I was just saying, we don't have a lot of current students who are guests on Yale Alumni Live because obviously we're telling alumni stories, but it's always really exciting to have current students and share their experiences at Yale. And yours is extremely unique for more than one reason. So before we before we get into the, the meat of it today, let's let's tell everybody just a little bit about you, where you're from and why you chose Yale. Of course. So Hi, everyone. My name is Khalil Green. I'm from Germantown, Maryland, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm currently a senior right now at Yale studying history, specifically on the social change and social movements pathway. Uh, and to answer your question on why I chose Yale, I actually, uh, my, my dream school for, I want to say, maybe my entire life up until the college decision point was MIT. Um, and I was actually deciding between MIT and Yale because at the time I really thought I was interested in STEM and wanted to go into like the technology field and um, Iron Man, Tony Stark, uh, his fictional character went to MIT. But when I visited Yale and within those like two days of Bulldog days, the people that I met and the campus itself and just all the prospects of like what you can do at Yale's campus really sucked me in um, and I just like my heart and my, my gut told me to go to Yale and I never looked back, never, never regretted not even for a second. I love that. And Cleo, what residential college are you in? I'm in TD, Timothy Dwight, the best one. We just won the Tin <laughs> Cup again. So I think we're, we are doing the lead, I think, for the most Tin Cup wins, but we're further in the lead now. I love that you just said what you said, because for the longest time on Yale Alumni Live, I would say, you know, what residential college were you in? And every single person would say, X, the best one. So thank you very much <laughs> for following suit. That's so funny. Of so course. So tell us, Khalil, like your experience the first couple of years at Yale, obviously pretty pretty normal, pretty college life, day to day. And then there have been like two pretty significant things that I want to talk to you about. First being that you were elected the first black president of the YCC, which obviously was a game changer for you. It, you know, I've, saw, I've seen a number of national interviews. It's really put you in the spotlight. It's done a lot of things for you and for Yale. So let's talk a little bit about that. And then the fact that you were in this position of representing students in one of the craziest years in Yale's history. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, leading up to jo joining the YCC and what that experience was like for you. Just, just start wherever makes sense for you on that part of your story. Yeah, of course. So I first joined student government in college. I never did student government or debate anything like that in high school. Um, so I was on the first year class council, um, which is something where two students are uh, selected from each residential college to like plan events for the first year class, like the first year formal, um, first year Olympics. So I did that as a first year, but I wasn't too involved with student government. And then my passion sort of rose when I joined my friend's campaign team because he ran for president when I was a freshman. Um, so I was just like a freshman liaison for him. He ended up not winning, but I still got a taste of student government that seemed like it was so invigorating, just fast paced and so fun. Um, so I applied to be on um, the executive board of the person who did win. Her name was Sal Rao. So I applied to be finance director because I did have a little economics like course or two underneath my belt, um, was in that STEM field at the time. So I could prove that I knew numbers. Um, and I was appointed onto the finance director position. And then about a week after I was appointed, it came out in this huge wide yen article that the previous student government had used students' tuition money to buy themselves Patagonia jackets embroidered with the YCC logo and their names and all of them. So it was this huge scandal that broke out. 
And it was sort of a mix up for a moment or two because people thought it was us because we had just come in. It was actually the previous people, our predecessors. So my entire first like four months in the YCC were just building up the financial infrastructure to make sure that it never happened again. Then after that, we, I did a lot more projects like getting disposable mental products in all of residential colleges, mm -hmm. increasing our engagement with New Haven through some projects. And I just had a really fun term as executive board, as an executive board member. Um, mm -hmm. And that led to the end of sophomore year when I ran for student body president. And so that process, how did that go? I mean, it, it was surprising to me. So I was talking to Cleo earlier about how, you know, Yale Alumni Association, we serve all the colleges at Yale, not just Yale College, all of our graduate professional school friends. So for those folks watching, tell us a little bit about that experience, like what it's like going into a campaign, the fact that you have a campaign, it's, it seems a little bit intense. So tell us about that process and what that was like for you. Yeah, of course. So the Yale College Council, um, it's Yale student government. You know, Yale has no shortage of politicians um, that are out in the real world. So you kind of get that a microcosm of that experience on campus. Um, so there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. You have to prepare your documents, your um, campaign documents, your proposals. I watched all the previous debates, reached out to a few of the previous presidents just for advice ahead of time. Um, you have to have kind of an encyclopedic knowledge of Yale's, like Yale as an entity, because one of the things you do is an interview with the YDN where they all the board members of the YDN grill you for like an hour on like trivia questions, just your policies. So a lot of preparation that goes into it for myself. When I, when the time the campaign started, it was actually an unopposed um, election. So it was an unopposed race, which means that even after all this preparation, you don't know that until you, like, you actually, like it starts in that week. So like huge sigh of relief for sure, but then also an added weight because when it is an unopposed election, people don't see you competing with another person right before you come in. So even though I did have a lot of wins in my pocket, I still had to make sure that I was taking it very seriously, as well as like those first whatever hundred days, if you call it, that we were getting things done because it was really important to kind of showcase your ability and show that you do really deserve the spot, um, even if it is an unopposed election, because there's no other competitors going against you right then and there. So you're, you're appointed president and you leave campus for the summer and that's when you got a little media attention for being the first black president of the YCC. So, you know, Cleo, I'm just curious, did that enter into your mind as you were preparing, as you were running? Was that really important to you to be able to bring in this new wave of diversity to the YCC? Talk a little bit about what that was like for you and what it continues yes, to be like for you. Yeah, so I actually didn't know I was gonna be the first black student body president until maybe two weeks before my campaign started, because um, it was mentioned by the Dean of the Afro-American Cultural Center that there, that she, as far as she knew, because she was at Yale longer than myself, mm -hmm. that I'd never been a black student body president. Then I asked my predecessor, Sal, who I mentioned, and she like looked in the record, she says she never thought there was one. Um, so it came up, the YDN I think also had research and they mentioned in one of their articles, they never really talked about it publicly um, until after I was elected. Mm -hmm. So when I got back home in Maryland, that's when I had my first interview with Fox 5 DC, which was a local mm -hmm. news station. Um, and what they did is they like, oh, it was actually, her name was Sean Yancey, she's now retired, but she's a person I used to watch like in the mornings as a kid. So it was <laughs> kind of crazy to be there. That yeah. was the first of many, but I was, that was insane to me. So I had a really nice interview with her, really mm -hmm. warm, really open. Um, and then after that interview, because it went live on like the internet and on TV, uh, I started getting a bunch of emails right after, like one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And it was just insane. It was like phone interviews and then other things. I had an internship at the time, but then I got a call from CNN saying that Don Lemon wanted me to interview him on like the prime time, his CNN prime time show. Um, so I had to like go from Philadelphia to DC and do an interview there. Some of them were better than others. Some of them I was a little bit more prepared for than others. Sometimes yeah. there were huge lights in my eyes and I couldn't hear. And there's like a little, and everything's so fast paced. So I'm definitely yeah. better at interviewing now than I was before. <laughs> um, but I think it was a crazy experience. I am very grateful for what I got to share with the world, which was my message on the importance of having representation in these spaces, what it meant to me, um, and the history of black students at Yale that led up to me being able to accomplish what I did. Yeah, it's really amazing. I remember getting news alerts on my phone that you were in these interviews and things were happening. And I was very proud and very happy for you. And, you know, we had crossed paths once or twice. So it was very exciting to see you in that way. So Khalil, what, what was the date? Remind me, what was the date that you took over as YCC president? I took over May 8th, 2019. I remember, I don't know why I remember that, but I remember that day. <laughs> okay. Maybe so, I just kept thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. So that was, three years, three, two years ago, 2019. Is that, is that, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know what day it is anymore, what year, I'm not sure. But I think it, it sounds like two years. Two years ago, so, yeah. 
So, uh, you know, everybody that's watching, here's Khalil, the first, you know, black president of the YCC takes over and then 2020 happens and you are, you're still in that position. You're in a leadership position. You've got all kinds of things coming at you. What is it like, you know, for you to be on campus be the representative of the student body during a really unprecedented time. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, so I, I wasn't on campus. Oh, fair, <laughs> as, fair. We, you were not on campus. <laughs> as a this funny is detail. around you, and you're not exactly, on campus. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's probably the thing that <laughs> really messed it up more than anything else is that we weren't on campus, which yeah. means you're not around your friends who can support you. Right. Um, you're, you're stuck at home. I, I had to live with my brother. Like, I didn't even have um, the ability to even go back home when it first hit. So that was really stressful. Um, just like the world's kind of going crazy. You have to like, we were just sustaining off of just like whatever food we could find just because like the grocery stores are wiped out. Like we were, um, that, that was an issue, which is kind of insane, right? And on top mm -hmm. of that, you have to respond immediately because it's all crisis response policy, right? Mm -hmm. And the biggest one that came about after we were first all sent home was the fact that Yale's grading is not meant to be equal when everyone's at home because Yale's like wealth disparities between like the poorest student to the wealthiest is just insane, right? And it's not an even playing field. So what we had to do, one of the biggest proposals and of the wins of the entire administration really was instilling a universal pass grading option or like universal pass grading mandate where every student would get a P on their transcript for all the classes that they're taking. But this was like a three week endeavor. It wasn't like okay. something where we just got to present it to Dean Chun and it was a yes. It was a pretty much a war on campus um, where there was like polls and data. And I had to give a presentation, two presentations in a small debate in front of every single Yale professor who would then wow. vote on whether or not they agree with my policy or the policy presented by two other philosophy professors who I don't even know how I did that. I talked with my friend. I remember what I did. I had my friend in the Yale debate team stay up with me till like midnight going over all of our arguments. And then my VP did a lot of data collection. So I went over all of that and then I just prayed a lot. And it ended up working. Um, thank God. It ended up working. So that was like a huge thing. And then after that, it was a lot of committees about reopening and policies and the news was coming in. Okay, we're not going to come back at the end of May. Maybe we'll come back, like, for the last thing, or maybe we'll have graduation. Okay, everything's scrapped for the next year, foreseeable future. Then what are we going to do from then? Um, and then two big things that happened after that were, of course, the George Floyd killing mm -hmm. and all the racial justice reckoning that would happen, once again, not on campus, because I almost said on campus myself, but, like, the opposite mm -hmm. of off on campus, off campus, as well as all of the reopening procedures related to, like, COVID and how we're going to yeah. make sure that students are following the rules. Because I always said in, like, the meetings with, that I had with the administrators, like, sex, drugs, and alcohol, those are going to be the things that really throw a wrench in all the plans that we have and we're talking yeah. candidly about college students. Um, right. So that was something that was just completely stressful, but we made it through, like everyone made it through. It's a huge campus wide, not, not campus wide, whatever, like Yale wide endeavor that was successful. And I think that was like a really, really tough thing to go through, but rewarding thing to look back on. Yeah, it, I mean, it was an unprecedented year. No one had anything to draw upon on how to react and how to behave and what to expect. It's been a crazy year and you know something I was talking about with one of my colleagues recently is you know the class of 2020 got about a half a year of a normal college mm -hmm. senior experience and I realized that you know you took some time off and now you're going to graduate in December and class of 2022 but you were for all intents and purposes a class a member of the class of 2021 and your class has had such a crazy year in that you never really got normalcy and so you know we we're looking now and thinking about well how can we support support your classmates that are about to graduate because we are just about a week out from commencement which is really exciting for those people participating but you know what a year what what a crazy year I know you have some ideas on ways that students and alums can work together so tell us a little bit about what you think you know representing class of 2021 what what would be beneficial and helpful to them from our alumni community yeah, I mean, I think the most practical thing, to be very honest, is like the job market that people are graduating into. Um, a lot of people don't have plans for what they're going to do after they graduate. And if they did, those plans have fallen through very sadly. Um, so I think in as much as alumni have like networks and connections, reaching out, there's a huge platform. Why am I blanking the name? Cross Campus. Cross Campus yes. platform um, <laughs> that alumni can, uh, alumni, plural, alumni can sign up onto to get connected. There's a lot of mentorship. Uh, events and, and programming that's happening through the Yale College Council as it now exists with its new president, Bayan um, Galal, who's actually the first Muslim president 
of the YCC, which is a huge thing, a huge accomplishment. So congratulations to her. So all of these different platforms, whether it be cross campus or some club that's hosting their own mentorship are great ways for alumni to get connected and hopefully offer jobs or at least guidance for how people can get employed. Um, that's the most practical way. But I think even larger than that is just, especially when there's something that's happening on campus that's sort of like a crisis or more spontaneous, a lot of times when we're looking for levers to how to like make sure that the administration is hearing us or that they're taking action, we do look to the alumni, but it's so hard to mobilize them um, in a short time scale because everyone's doing their own thing and they're usually all across the world and they have families of their own. So I think in as much as alumni are just staying attuned, whether it be through Facebook, which I think is a huge and a really strong platform, especially the Yale F alumni Facebook group, yeah. um, just being aware and attuned to what's happening on campus always, especially if you hear something happening that's huge in the national spotlight, but probably be some sort of micro uh, effect that it has on Yale's campus related to like policies or something important to students. So I think always listening out, keeping a keen ear is another way to get involved as it's necessary for students. And I think that'll be really really strong um there'll be a lot of strong collaborations that come from alumni who are proactive about those two things awesome i feel like um you kind of just set yourself up for like a job at the yaa since you mentioned cross <laughs> campus the facebook group all the great ways to stay connected so cleo i have a question for you i did not tell you i was gonna ask you this but i think mm -hmm. you can handle it so yeah. obviously it was a challenging year you did some really great things on behalf of your fellow students. Mm -hmm. um, it, we all know it was hard. We all know it's still a little bit weird, hard to navigate, not quite sure what's happening. Tell me what you think is one of the biggest silver linings of this past year for you. Um, I think my one-on-one -on -one relationships have gotten a lot stronger. I think I was like forced slash like also leaned into having to get to know a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. specifically like leading up to the YCC, but also even more so, I think, after, to, like, in my head, a good president someone that knows a lot of people. Um, so I always, like, went to parties and events and walked around across campus and was always as visible as I could be, always in dining halls. I never really had, like, personal time with my friends, especially the friends that I had my first two years, because I was always wrapped up in my work, like, all the time, all the time, at all times. Um, so I think one thing that I was able to do with, like, COVID kind of forces you to not be around a lot of people at once so I think I've had to be very intentional about who I'm like becoming close to and how I'm doing that so I think I've been able to have longer conversations and more frequent long conversations with individuals that I'm really like um, keen on investing my time into that I could see becoming lifelong relationships coming out of Yale and I don't mm -hmm. think I would have invested as much time without um, kind of being forced to be in the situation so that's mine. That's great. I love that. I think we have to remember that there are a handful of silver linings. Obviously, a lot of really hard things happened over the past year and a half. But, you know, we have to move forward. And yeah. speaking of moving forward, what are you most excited about when it comes to coming back to campus next year? Oh, my God. Um, Probably a lot. But the parties. I the parties, definitely. Um, I miss the parties. I want to party. I want to go out. I want to go to Popeye's at late night. And then I want to, like, come back to my room and just go to sleep after partying. Like, that's just that whole feeling. Like, I just miss that so much. That's mine for sure. So the, the alumni version of that would be the community at Yale, The community, right? yeah. The community <laughs> at Yale, for sure. Um, the community and the events. And I just, like, miss dancing. I miss, like, meeting up with friends I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Because, um, like, that's something you get to do when it's, like, I think that's an important part of Yale thing. And it's not, um, it, it's something that you cherish more when you don't have it. And I think I cherish it almost like a, it's like a very real thing, like that community um, and seeing people and, and like having fun and dancing. Like I think I haven't had that in such a long time. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I really think absence makes the heart grow fonder sometimes. And it doesn't hurt that you're going to go back and meet a brand new handsome Dan. I mean, Kingman's about as cute as they can be. So hopefully it'll be a really great year for you to end your Yale career. And we have mm -hmm. a lot more to talk about Cleo in the future as you move through your last semester at Yale, but it's been a really a great pleasure talking to you today and hearing about your experience. And let's end this with what would you like to say to your classmates who are about to graduate next week? Just a quick word to them. Yeah, so class of 2021, that stayed class of 2021. Um, congrats on making it this far. I know it's been hard, um, but I think one thing that I'll probably leave with is that everyone should realize that I wouldn't say we were robbed of a year, but we were, uh, a year was diminished from our time at Yale. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it can't be made back in like little ways. So I would definitely say like, 
make sure to keep in touch with people if you wanted to hang out with someone or there's a friendship that you wanted to rekindle that you couldn't because it just didn't work out like you can still contact these people like there's social media nowadays if there's any time period in the world where that can happen it's now or maybe just in the future but especially now um so i think just making sure to stay in touch with people that you want to is going to be important and don't like give up on um reclaiming the time or the relationships or the the um, friendships that were sort of lost or diminished because of COVID and how we had to respond to it. Cool. Thank you for that softball. That was perfect. I will end with, end this by saying there are Yale clubs around the world. We welcome the class of 2021. We are so excited for you to join the alumni community. You too, Cleo. We've already told the Yale Club of Washington, D.C. to look out for you in December. There are shared interest groups. There are plenty of ways to stay connected to, to Yale because it's not just about your time on campus. It's, it's a lifetime. So, Cleo, thank you. I look forward to seeing you back on campus in the fall. Go out and enjoy your Friday. Got it. Thank you so much. It was Thanks great so to much. Talk Take to care. You. Bye, everybody. Bye.